guys, it's time to pick another winner for our t-shirt giveaway. Like Dad said in last week's video, all you had to do to be entered into win was comment Nightmare down in the comment section. Um, so if we look down here, we have nine comments. So I'm going to head over to our random number generator, make it all fair and square. Set the min to one, the max to nine, and then generate. Okay, comment number nine. Starting from the bottom due to uh, when they posted the comments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have the winner is JP Man Etez. Congratulations, you win a Rebuild It t-shirt. Um, we'll send you an email with the info and get your information from you so we can get your t-shirt sent. And uh, congratulations. All right, so finally, guys, welcome to a new episode here of uh, Rebuild It. We are going to retry these panels again. I've got the all the runs sanded out of the bumper. Got it all scuffed up. Ready for paint, same with the fender. So I really only have a couple little areas, like I've got a little bit of sand through right here, which the red was underneath this red, so it's hard to see, but I'm gonna have to blend from about this way forward and try to leave all this the original color so it'll go into that door. And I got a couple sand through spots like right here and there and there. So all that should be covered with the paint. And I got a couple right here on the bumper. And of course the big one that made me have the nightmare and the heart attack in the last episode right here. So let's get some red paint in the gun and get all that stuff sprayed and then try for the clear again. got the easy part done, the color. Didn't have any issues with that, which you hardly ever do with color. So got all the bare spots covered back up, blend it over to that corner to that side. Everything's covered on the bumper. So now we're gonna let it wait 30 or 40 minutes or so to get nice and uh, make sure the flash is really good. And then we'll start the scary clear clear part. This is KPW Auto. He was our last t-shirt contest winner. You too could win an incredible t-shirt just like him and your life could drastically change forever. You could get that dream job working for Klondike discovering what you wouldn't do for a Klondike bar. You could buy that beautiful Lamborghini that you always had hanging on your wall as a kid. Heck, you might even get asked out by a perfect 10 while grocery shopping for yogurt. Well, let's not get carried away. We all know how you can be. Let's just say they're a solid eight and a half. The point is, the shirt could change your life, but only if you enter. Winning a Rebuild a t-shirt does not guarantee that your life will improve in any way. The scenario presented here is merely a possible outcome of an infinite amount of outcomes. Rebuild it cannot be held responsible for your bummer of a life should you win the t-shirt. Nothing happens to you. Just know the t-shirt. It's free. Alright, so the color is all dry. I'm going to tack cloth it off one more time and get ready for the clear. Here we go. Okay, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a big giant bug flying around in here. There it is. And I have fresh paint. And at this point, I do not have a single run. I'll explain to you here in a little bit what I did different this time. So right now I'm guarding this from the bug. There he is. Hey guys, it's Andy here back at the editing studio. I just wanted to point out one thing real quick while we're watching Dad follow this bug around with the camera. How big is this bug that we can clearly see it on camera without being zoomed in at all? That thing has to be like the size of a bird. All right, that's all I had to say. And I'm hoping I don't take a swing at it and knock a bunch of dust into this paint. Okay, so you are asking yourself, what did he do different? Why did he not get all the runs this time? Well, a couple things. One is, if you remember last time I had both of these items hanging, okay, so the more vertical area that you have, you know, if this thing is hanging up, then all of this area right here was in a vertical surface, so there was much more chance of runs, you know, the more it's, it's hanging. So laying it down flat like we had the hood, remember we didn't have any runs in the hood because it was laying flat, so did the same thing with this, laid it flat, no runs. But the hood is a different story. You just don't have, or the bumper, you don't have a way to make it all 
horizontal because there's so many curves and ups and downs and all that. So did a little more research and figured out that if you give it the first coat of clear, just a kind of a coat that you're not really worried about, about it being all nice and shiny and all your um, paint droplets running together like you do at the end, you just want kind of a tack coat. So you put it on there and it's kind of sticky. You wait till it almost has the consistency of a stick of tape. If you put your finger on a piece of tape and that, that amount of stick, that's kind of what you want the clear to be before you put your second coat on. And so that second coat grabs to that first coat and it holds on and doesn't run. And this one I had a couple of rough areas after I did the second coat. So I went ahead and did a third coat even. and still didn't get any runs. So it's got some dust nibs in it just like it always does so i'll sand and buff that but do not have to buff any runs so hopefully we can buff this thing without getting any more uh burn through or sand through and get this thing put on the car this week all right so i've got this front fender all sanded down and uh down to 3000 it's ready to buff and I've got to sand a little bit on this bumper, although it barely has anything to take off of it. It's really smooth, so I'm just gonna sand some of the flat areas and buff that out. And I have to have that done and this thing back together by noon, and it's about seven o'clock now. So uh, I got the guy coming to pick up the Mustang so he can replace the windshield, and he's gonna actually drive it and so I want the inner fender liners and all that back in so that if you throw those rocks, it doesn't come up and dent the inside of this fender <laughs> that I just fixed. So uh, we got a lot to get together in a short time. So let's get some, buff some more sanding and buffing done and then we'll start reinstallation of the parts. All right, so I have the other fender buffed out, installed. Gaps are good. Um, and I'm working on the bumper in the bumper assembly facility in here. Oh, look at that. So I guess I just got that upper reel to install on the horse. Got everything else on there except for that chin spoiler. So then I'll be ready to install that and just do a few more little touch up things and this thing should be about finished. So the bumper is on, it lines up pretty good. And I have a bat, I'm getting ready to put the inner fender liner in over there and I've got a burned out bolt in that little parker light there. So before I can put that in, I've got to go we'll get a bolt. So and I got to put the little uh, cover back on the hood there and the cover that goes up above the radiator. Just a few little odds and ends, and this thing will be ready for the windshield. Okay, so I've got the new bulb in, and yep, it works. So, get that the rest of the way installed, and we'll put that fender liner back in, and move to the other side.
so she is back together such so the little uh sills down there the rocker guards whatever you call them down at the bottom and uh the splash guard up underneath the uh front there but i ended up not being able to get it done in time for the guy to come do the windshield today and so he's going to do that tomorrow so i'm going to stick those two rocker guards on there real quick and get it outside so he can pick it up Alright guys, so we have the new windshield in. So the car is complete on the outside, other than just a little bit of cleanup. So we'll get this outside and wash it, and um, the person that this car is going to should be here in probably an hour. So we'll get a shot of us turning over the keys to her, and uh, hopefully she likes it. Okay, so while we're waiting on the customer to get here, um, I thought I'd go ahead and go over with you guys the uh, totals on what we spent on this vehicle. But I could do that at the end of every build because it just helps you guys that have never done this before see that you can do it if you just want to put in the hours and the labor and go through the heart heartaches of paint problems like me. Um, you can do it. So I'll just go through the list here and tell you what we spent on each thing and give you a total, and you can tell me if you think it's worth it. So we spent, for the car at the auction, we spent $1,550, $1,550. And then you add fees to that. Copart always has a lot of fees added on, so that was $398. Then we had paint, and I did all the paint myself, but I had to buy the paint, which is expensive, especially red. And that was $509.95. And then we had to buy a radiator, a condenser, and a fan, if you remember that was smashed in the front. That was $182.06. We had a blown airbag on the steering wheel, which was $60. The radiator support that we had to weld in, if you remember that, that was $122.61. The front bumper cover up there was $155.25. Uh, if you remember when we got the hood, uh, we found it from a guy on our first road trip when we actually went and bought the car. So the hood and one of the headlights, the guy made us a deal for $200. So the other headlight we had to buy, which was 80. And then we had a windshield, which was 180. And then we have a bunch of miscellaneous parts. Like there were some parts in the motor that were bad, uh, tire flat, uh, a bunch of like oil changing, cleaning everything inside. Um, just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff was $449.56. So you add all that up. And we've got $3,087.43. So $3,900 close to it. So what do you guys think? You think this is a V6 2010 Mustang with 60, I don't remember, 64,000, something like that, miles on it. Um, I still have to change an actuator in there that click, that clicking noise, if you guys remember from the first uh, episode where we started up and kept hearing the clicking. I thought it was a CD player trying to eject a CD that wasn't in there. Well, it's an actuator. I believe it goes with the uh, changing the vents from like defrost to floor. So I need to replace that still, but everything else is done. I need floor mats. Um, so really that's about it, $3,900. Um, pretty nice car with low mileage for that. And it's convertible and everything works on it. So, um, And the customer who will be here in just a little bit is not just a normal customer, it's my daughter. And before you say, oh, he bought a car for his daughter and she's probably spoiled you know this is not a Ferrari <laughs> but no she bought her own car and sold it and used the money to buy this and I put in the labor for it so she works hard and, and uh, did this on her own so 
we'll give this to her when she gets here in a little bit. What do you think? I well, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Rebuild It and this entire build on the 2010 Mustang. Uh, it was kind of long and drawn out because of all the waiting we had to do for different things, but uh, it turned out good. So um, stay tuned next week for our next uh, episode. We're doing the finale on the 2017 Jeep, I think, on Paul's Jeep. And we'll do another t-shirt giveaway on then. And thanks for the uh, guys that entered on the last one and congratulations on the winners. See you next week. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. See you guys next week. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.